A powerful earthquake of magnitude 7.5 struck the remote southern Drake Passage at at precisely 2.16 and 19 seconds UTC on August 22, 2025. The United States Geological Survey initially reported the tremor as an 8.0 event, but later revised it downward to 7.5. The quake occurred at a very shallow depth of roughly 10.8 kilometres, about 6.7 miles beneath the seafloor. Shallow enough that powerful shaking was felt across the region, despite its remote location. The epicentre was located more than 700 kilometres, approximately 435 miles southeast of Ushuaia, Argentina, which is the nearest sizable city in this sparsely populated corner of the world. No major population centres were near the epicentre and there have been no reports of damage or casualties. The Pacific Tsunami Warning Center in Honolulu immediately assessed the situation and, after a brief advisory, announced no tsunami threat to distant shores. Chilean authorities had initially issued localized tsunami alerts for their coastline and Antarctic bases, but these warnings were soon retracted. Chile's Naval Hydrographic and Oceanographic Service, for example, warned residents at its Antarctic base Frey about 258 kilometers, 160 miles, from the epicenter to take precautions. But no waves of concern were observed. New Zealand's National Emergency Management Agency initially issued a precautionary statement, but confirmed shortly after that there was no tsunami threat to New Zealand. In short, despite the quake's enormous size, no tsunami materialized beyond very small sea-level disturbances, and most coastal areas at risk were spared any abnormal waves. What has baffled scientists most is the quake's location. The Drake Passage lies in open ocean far from any well-known tectonic plate fault or subduction zone, so finding the source of such a large earthquake is puzzling. Seismologists note that just south of Cape Horn, the Nazca Plate's massive subduction beneath South America, responsible for historic quakes like the 1960 magnitude 9.5 event, is believed to terminate or weaken. Many tectonic maps instead depict a transform fault called the Shackleton Fracture Zone in this region. In other words, beyond the famous Chilean trench, the crust was thought to slip laterally rather than dive or rise. Yet recent quakes tell a different story. Earlier this year on May 2, 2025, a magnitude 7.4 earthquake in nearly the same sector had a thrust mechanism implying the plates were colliding rather than sliding. That means what had been assumed to be a lateral fault system may instead be hiding compressional features. In light of this, geologists suggest the possibility of an active but concealed thrust fault system. Put simply, there is no obvious surface or mapped deep fault at the epicenter to account for such a powerful event. Event. This mystery has drawn intense scrutiny. The Drake Passage is a geologically complex area where the Antarctic and South American plates, along with fragments like the Scotia Plate, meet beneath stormy seas. In the deep geological past, the Drake Passage opened tens of millions of years ago, between 49 and 17 million years ago, as Antarctica drifted away, carving a deep channel and creating numerous submarine fractures. Modern surveys note many fracture zones and transform faults on the seafloor, but none had been linked to such a massive quake. Up until now, only a few moderate earthquakes and the May event had hinted at hidden faults beneath the deep ocean. Observers say the current earthquake's fault mechanics are key to understanding what happened. Analysis of the May 2025 quake and other nearby tremors shows they were not pure strike-slip, but had a thrust-style mechanism. If the August event behaved similarly, it suggests an unknown reverse fault may have broken. This would mean compressional forces pushing plates together were released under the ocean floor, despite the absence of a well-known subduction zone. It forces geologists to reconsider their models of how the Scotia-Antarctica boundary works. It may be that an uncharted fault segment, perhaps a concealed remnant of the old plate margin, ruptured. Others propose stress has been accumulating in the Antarctic crust due to changes elsewhere, such as weight shifts from melting ice or distant subduction shifts, and finally found release here. None of these ideas is confirmed, which is why many experts describe the quake's source as an open question. Speculation continues as to possible causes.
Some scientists point to glacial isostatic adjustment, where the removal of massive ice sheets due to climate change relieves pressure on Earth's crust, potentially triggering fault movements in unexpected places. Others argue that microplate interactions around the Scotia plate may be less mapped than thought, leaving room for hidden boundaries to fail. Another line of inquiry examines whether an ancient fault buried beneath layers of seafloor sediment suddenly reactivated. Whatever the case, the quake underscores how much remains unknown about Earth's southernmost seismic frontiers. The seismic event itself was immense. The U.S. Geological Survey's models and seismic stations showed shaking across a vast area, and the agency issued a green alert for loss and casualty potential, essentially stating that the risk of severe damage or fatalities was very low, largely because of the lack of nearby population centers. Seismometers recorded aftershocks, including a magnitude 5.1 about an hour later, but none approached the main shock size. With an 8.0 level initial report, many oceanic sensors and coastal alarms briefly sounded before standing down once the magnitude was revised. Ships in the region would have felt significant rolling motions, but none reported major incidents. The massive waves of the Drake Passage, often 12 metres high and driven by the Antarctic Circumpolar Current, likely helped disperse any tsunami energy into the Southern Ocean. Authorities responded quickly. Chile's Antarctic bases were told to evacuate shorelines. Australia, New Zealand and Pacific Island nations all monitored for tsunami impacts. New Zealand's NEMA initially advised of a possible tsunami, but hours later confirmed there was no threat. Aside from alarm spreading across social media and news outlets, the quake's immediate danger to people passed uneventfully. Satellite data and tide gauges, including UNESCO's sea level records, showed only normal ocean fluctuations. The timing of the quake is noteworthy. It came less than a month after a magnitude 8.8 .8 earthquake off Kamchatka, Russia, on July 30, 2025. Some observers noted the clustering of such extreme quakes, though seismologists caution that these are likely unrelated, each governed by local tectonic stresses. Still, these events highlight the unpredictable yet persistent seismic activity across the world's oceans. To better understand the scale of this event, geologists have turned to history. While the Drake Passage has seen occasional moderate quakes, few have exceeded magnitude 7 in modern records. The May 2025 quake marked the first major tremor in decades. Looking further back, the Scotia Plate boundary has generated sporadic magnitude 6-level quakes over the past century, but none rivaled the August quake in size. Historical accounts mentioned tremors in the region during the mid-20th century, though seismographic networks were sparse at the time. The contrast between that relatively quiet past and the sudden emergence of back-to-back -back powerful quakes in 2025 suggests either a newly active fault system or a long-dormant boundary awakening. The scientific community now faces the challenge of unravelling the mystery. Geophysicists worldwide are analysing seismograms to refine the quake's fault plane and mechanism. Marine geophysical surveys may revisit the Drake Passage seafloor to search for subtle fault scarps or evidence of rupture. Data from tide gauges and ocean bottom seismometers will be scrutinized for clues. For local residents and infrastructure, consequences remain minimal. Chile's southern communities felt only faint tremors, and scientific outposts remain intact. Maritime operations continue, albeit with caution, as this event is logged as the largest ever recorded in the Drake Passage. In a nutshell, this no-fault line earthquake is a scientific puzzle. Experts admit their existing maps did not mark any active fault at the epicenter, making this event both an enigma and a turning point in how geologists view the region, whether caused by hidden faults, microplate shifts, or glacial unloading, the quake is a powerful reminder that Earth's crust is dynamic and still holds secrets. This event now joins the annals of unusual earthquakes that challenge humanity's understanding of the planet. If you found this report insightful, make sure to like, share and subscribe for more in-depth updates on Earth's most surprising and powerful natural events.